Good morning, church. When you play the game of football, sometimes you come, come to the line of scrimmage and you observe what's going on on the defense and you call an audible. That's what we just did. Good morning, choir. Good morning, church. It is good to see your smiling faces. We're so thankful that you're with us today. What a wonderful day to celebrate today. We get to praise the Lord, we get to come together, and we get to worship and, and celebrate our, our moms. Um, what? Amen, yeah, amen is right. Hey, listen, uh, there's a uniqueness that comes with Mother's Day. Some of us here are thankful that we still have our mom who was available and that the uh, e either in earshot of a conversation or whether a text or a phone call, you're able to call your mom. Some of us here in this room today would give a right leg, maybe even a left leg, to have an in, in a personal conversation with our moms. Right? Right? So as we celebrate our moms today, and as we say praise the Lord for our moms today, did we, did we have some gifts that we're going to give out this morning? 
Have they already given out the gifts? So you got a $100 gift card from the church this morning <laughs> to Bass Pro Shop. <laughs> Just making sure that you'd received your gift this morning. And again, we want to say thank you so much to our moms. What a, what a great time to celebrate. I'm hopeful that my mom is uh, watching. Yeah, if, Mom, if you haven't received your gift this morning, would you raise your hand just to make sure that we get that to you? And again, if you get the $100 gift card uh, to Bass Pro Shop, that was for me, not for you. So, anyways, thank you for reminding me of that. Um, also this morning, before we get too far into this, I, I, I've asked uh, for a time of testimony from one of our moms to come and share just a quick moment about the influence of a godly mom, godly grandmother, and, and how that influences, influenced your life. So um, before we pray and before we greet, I'm going to ask Miss Diane. Miss Diane, would you come and share with us really quickly, please, ma'am, the influence uh, of, of a godly woman in your life, please, ma'am. When Tommy first asked me to do this, it didn't dawn on me that this is the first, first time that I don't have my mom on Mother's Day. So it is different most definitely different. But when I started to think about what I wanted to say, it, it became very easy because to be raised by a Christian mother meant unconditional love. It meant a loving and forgiving heart. It, mean, it meant living by a Christian example, to know you were always being prayed for, and then in the midst of that, there was also that dose of discipline that we always didn't necessarily like either. But then not only uh, did my mom teach, teach me, and live by these examples, but I was ever so fortunate to have a mother-in-law that lived by those same uh, examples and taught in that same way. So did that make me a Christian? No. But it sure did give me the example that I needed to follow, and it set the foundation for me. And, you know, both my mom and Travis's mom, they were rocks to me, and they kept me grounded all through my life. So my children were raised by these same examples and ways, at least we tried. Were any of us perfect? No. But with God's help, um, me and my mother's and mother-in-law, um, my children and my grandchildren know they are loved unconditionally. And it's sad to say that so many people today, so many children today don't know that they're loved unconditionally. That parents, mothers say things that make them feel like there's a condition set on that love. And but as Christian mothers, we need to really instill in, in our children and other children around us that they are loved unconditionally. Teachers have a, a big job with this because, you know, when I was growing up, it was the norm to be in church. It was the norm to have Christian mothers. That's not true today. There's more that's not Christian than there are Christian mothers. So our teachers really have a big job on them because they have all those children that have no way of having that unconditional love. We've heard it said it takes a village to raise a child. Well, we're the village. We need to work together. We need to pray for each other. We need to pray for our teachers, pray for those mothers and that are helping to raise other people's children or their grandchildren or those in school or those that we see around us and not to judge each other. We need to be able to call on each other in, in times of hurt, in times of celebration, and in times of need and know that that Christian mother is here, that know you have an ear, that you have a heart that's listening to you. What a child learns from us frames our lives. 
and we owe it to God and to them to partner with God to pray to be their solid rock and their firm foundation and to use this village to help raise our children. You, you may be a, a mom biologically today. Uh, that is, you've had your own children. You may be here this morning and you are raising someone else's children along with your children. Or maybe you're here this morning and you're raising someone else's children, though you may not have your own children. Um, I know for my own uh, self, my, my sister Jennifer, she's never married, never had her own children, but she has uh, been right there uh, with my nieces and nephews as well as my own children and she's also an educator and uh, she she's just like a mom in the classroom to give that love and that influence that is desperately needed and just recently she has become a mother herself she has a a, a black Labrador retriever <laughs> that uh, looks just like her um, <laughs> I'm gonna be in trouble for that one now but uh, anyway, I think you understand the picture. So moms, we want to say thank you so much. We love you. We know you love us like nobody else. And we're grateful for it. Would you, would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we love you this morning. We thank you so much for the opportunity to celebrate our moms, Lord. And, and sometimes Mother's Day is, is, it is a day to celebrate but also, Lord, sometimes it's a difficult day for many. So, Lord, I pray you fill in the gaps where it's needed with your love, with your grace, with your compassion. And, Lord, I thank you for the memories that we have. Uh, what a celebration it is, Lord, to think back on our moms, how they've influenced us through the years, how they've loved on us. And even my own mom, Lord, she, she didn't really know that she was being the example of Jesus that she was in front of me. Uh, Lord, as she took up uh, what was due to me most of the time. So I thank you for that example, Father. Again, we love you, Lord. We thank you for the morning as we celebrate our moms, as we've come to worship you today, dear Lord Jesus. Uh, I pray you would be exalted through this morning. We love you, Father, and we ask your blessings upon our time. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody unplug the baptistry. Please stand for our welcome chorus. Set my soul on fire, Lord. Set my soul. my 
song is off to him. Father, we come today just thanking you for all your many blessings, thanking you when we get sick, we can call upon you and you just take care of us. And we just praise you and give you thanks for that. And Lord, I just ask that you would do one thing for us today, that you would put someone in our path that we might tell them about our Lord and tell them how great he is and how he takes care of us day by day. We praise you and give you thanks for this. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. y'all stand and worship with us. Good morning, everybody.
and pray with me today. Dear God, we thank you so much for this beautiful day that we get to celebrate our mothers. And I thank you for the two blessings that you gave me. Not just my birth mother, but the mother-in-law that I was given, God. Both of them set such godly examples for me. take this day to enjoy, but we also take it as a lesson, God, that we are able to experience this day. God, we just praise you, and we thank you for your mercy and for your grace, and we pray that this will be a wonderful day and a wonderful service, God, honoring you, because we do it all for you and all for your glory. In your precious and holy I want to invite you this morning to turn with me to the book of James as our youngsters are finding their way to Children's Church. We haven't told the Children's Church workers yet, but Mom, we're going to keep your kids all day so you can go home and take a nap. <laughs> Aren't you glad you don't have Children's Church this morning? Join me in the book of James, chapter 1. Before we get there, actually, as you're turning there, let me read this little note to you. This was delivered to us through the postal service this week. It says, we thank you, bunches and bunches, as there's a flower, a bunch of flowers on the front. It says, words cannot express adequately my gratitude for your outpouring of hospitality shown to George Power. What an inspiration you are to others to see firsthand the love of Christ through your love for others. Your light shines bright. Grateful and thankful. Uh, Matthew 5, 16, uh, one of the young ladies that worked for Georgia Power. So uh, during the tornado, it was uh, a blessing, I believe, for us to be the command center for Georgia Power and uh, serve them and help them through what was going on and what was taking place. And one of the things that came to uh, my attention was uh, one of the gentlemen, he was not a lineman, but he was a tree operating person, uh, a tree surgeon, I guess you could say. And uh, as, as he came through the line and got his plate while we were over in the chapel area, he got his plate and began to exit through the doors. And someone caught him over there and said, sir, you're welcome to stay inside and eat. And he said, are you sure? And that person said, absolutely, please sit in the air conditioner, enjoy the comfort of the chairs, and please just relax, thank you for what you're doing. And that gentleman said, this is the first time in my whole life that I have ever felt welcome 
in a church. Can you imagine? You, you want to praise God for being that kind of place, but you also kind of feel heartbroken that not every place is like this place. Is that okay to say that? So we celebrate and we praise God um, for the opportunity to serve. And I want to say how grateful I am. I almost want to say, and I, I don't mean this in a sinful way, but just how proud I am to be the pastor of a church who would serve and give, serving selflessly and giving so generously, generously to help through such a time as we are still in, by the way. So praise God for that opportunity. Have you found your place there in the book of James, chapter 1? We're going to deal with verses 19 through 27 this morning. Uh, the title of this message is called Hearing Versus Doing the Word of God. If you would stand with me so that we could honor the reading of the Word of the Lord together. You may say, Brother Tommy, we've stood up all morning. Well, praise, praise God, when you get to heaven, you're going to get new hips and new knees. Until then, we're going to wear these out. Amen? There are churches in our world today that will not stand in order to read the Word of God. And I hope and pray that you don't mind, because we're going to stand and honor the Word of the Lord as we read it together. And if you don't like it, it's okay. You can let me know. Uh, but we're still going to do it. Amen? Verse 19, chapter 1, book of James. My dearly loved brothers, understand this. Everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For man's anger does not accomplish righteousness, or excuse me, God's righteousness. Verse 21, Therefore, rid yourselves of all moral filth and evil excess. Humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save you. You may say, what do I need to be saved from? Well, you need to be saved, number one, from yourself. Because why? Because I'm a sinner in need of God's grace, every single one of us. Verse 22, but be doers of the word and not only hearers, deceiving yourselves. See, when we read through a passage of Scripture, there will be one passage or one verse in that uh, paragraph of Scripture that will be the main idea. Guess what verse 22 is? The main idea of this passage of Scripture, verse 23. But if anyone is a hearer, of the word and not a doer, he is like a man looking at his own face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and right away forgets what kind of man he is. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it is not a, uh, a forgetful hearer, but a doer who acts. This person will be blessed in what he does. And if anyone thinks he is religious without controlling his tongue, oh, Lord, help me, somebody. But... But deceiving his heart, his religion is useless. Now, you might want to scratch through that word or underline that word religion and write the word faith in there, okay? It's not thinking in terms of religion like you and I experience in today. Verse 27, pure and undefiled religion before our God and Father is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and, we usually stop there, but there's an and to this, and to keep oneself unstained or polluted by the world, and I'm going to add the word, around us. Let's pray. Father, in your wisdom, and in your power, and through your inspiration, as you breathed out Scripture to its authors, you put this word in this passage today for our hearts this morning. We're, we're just walking through the scripture, Lord. In James chapter 1, this is what's next. And here it is, Lord, laying it out for us that we're not supposed to just hear the word. We're supposed to enact the word of God into our lives in such a way that we're trying to filter through and live the word of God every single day. And it's difficult, Lord. This, this passage actually cuts very deeply into my heart and brings conviction. And where there's conviction, we ask for forgiveness. Where we do not necessarily act in accordance with your word. Father, as we walk through this passage this morning, reveal your truth to your people that we might draw closer to you. Help me, Father. I claim the, the power of Scripture this morning. 
and ask you for boldness that will shake the foundations of this room. Speak to us today, Father, as your servants and your saints are listening. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. You may be seated. Hearing versus doing the Word of God. This past week I was reading a, a book and I know several of you just said, praise God for that. But as I was reading through this book, the author of this book was sharing his experience as he went off to college. Uh, maybe this was a part of your experience and you went off to college as well. Or maybe there was a work-related experience that you went through. But where I went off to college at the Baptist College of Florida, we had this class. It was actually a one-hour class. It's probably the only class I made an A in, but it was called Orientation. I made an A that semester in that class. But you see, orientation is a class that, that it really requires no note-taking. It requires no test-taking. There's no papers that you actually write. And the goal of that class is just to bring about an, an orientation of what the college or the college life that you're going to experience in what is like. Uh, they're going to walk you through uh, going what it means to go to the library. Did you know that your college had a library on it while you were there? Uh, I went one time through orientation. Um, now, y'all, come on. Some of you are upset about that. That's okay. So anyway, so as we're reading through this, uh, this book, and he's telling us about orientation, listen to what he has to say here. He says, all the freshmen were required to take this class. It was a class on how college life is supposed to take place and how to study and how to do research, even though, uh, even how to use the library. No grades were given, no assignments, no notes were taken, but of course there was a pass or fail grade. Um, uh, in that class, uh, you, you've been given the tools that were needed for success through the avenue of orient orientation. And the question is, as a student, even though a grade will be given and the tools will be given, will you, here's the, here's the question, will you employ what was given to you for a successful college career or will you neglect the information that was given only being a hearer and not actually a doer of what you have heard? Interesting correlation. The author of the book that I was reading was actually trying to correlate what it's like for many people who come to church day in, day out, Sunday in, Sunday out, come to Sunday school, come to worship, go and praise God and say amen, but never actually leave the church facility and go and implement the Word of God or employ the Word of God in their everyday life. What a correlation. You know, that's exactly what James is telling us here in James chapter 1 in verses 19 through 27. He's saying this information that is given to you is given to you in such a way that it requires an action. There is something that we must do. So the reality is this can be said of the church and the Word of God. How often have we come to worship expecting to hear a word from the Lord and walk away as though we've only entered in and exited out of an orientation class with no application that may become evident in our lives? Let me give you a principal truth real quick. The Word of God was not written solely for the sake of information. Now, now, don't hear something different. Don't hear me say something wrong in this, and don't listen wrongly. Did you know you can hear? I can say it right, and you can hear it wrong. Can I get a witness? Husbands, say amen. Wives, say oh my. That's right. So, so hear me say this correctly. The challenge is not only to take in the information but the application that leads to transformation is what we're seeking. Let me say that again. The information is one thing, but it's the application of the information that will lead to transformation in our lives. You might even ask that question, why are you so different? And I would say, well, because I'm from Florida. 
And the rest of you would say, amen to that. No, no. see, in your Christian walk, someone may come to you and say, why are you so different? You know, I've been going to church all my life, Brother Tommy, and I've sat under preachers. You, wouldn't, you just wouldn't believe the number of preachers that I have sat under. And my question always is, what are you doing with the Word of God that's been given to you? And what application are you making of that word? Because it's the application of that information that will bring us to a place of transformation. And when that transformation takes place, guess what? You will not be the same. You and I will not be the same. So, so as we walk through this this morning, the challenge is not only to take in the information, but allow that information to transform our lives as we seek to apply the Word of God every day. So as we walk through this this morning, let me show you. Number one, and, and letter A for me this morning is this. I want you to notice the observation from Scripture. Verses 19 through 21. Let's make an observation here. My dearly loved brothers, understand this. Everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Why is that? Because there's a result of anger. For man's anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Therefore, ridding ourselves or yourselves of all moral filth and evil excess, humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save you. Did you know in order for salvation to take place in your life, you don't just have to hear the word of God, you have to receive the word of God. That When I tell you Jesus saves and I tell you the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he was uh, born... Uh, that he uh, lived, he died, and he rose again in order to save us, in order to be the payment, the ransom for our debt, and our death, uh, debt rather. When, when I tell you that, you can't just walk out of here knowing the information. You actually have to have ownership of that information in order for that information to have application and transformation in your life. You have to not just know it, you have to own it and believe it. That is why the scripture tells us, and I'll go over this passage again later on, uh, that, that we must uh, believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord. That tells me that there's a requirement in my life that I have to respond to the word of God. So observation number one is this. Notice, listening rightly will lead to speaking rightly, and listening wrongly will lead to speaking wrongly. Do you see the correlation in that? Watch as we walk through this. Number one, notice this. We have an eagerness that is backwards according to Scripture. All right, ooh, mm, mercy. I almost brought a two liter of water in here this morning because we're going to be here that long. Kidding. We, our eagerness should be eager to hear the word of the Lord and operate in obedience to the word of instruction. But what does it say that we do? Watch. My dearly loved brothers, understand this. Everyone must be quick to hear. We must be quick to what first? Hear. Hey, listen, we have, to become, we have to train ourselves to hear before we what? Speak. Now, here's what happens in our world today. We are dull of hearing and quick of speaking, which means my speaking is mostly dull most of the time. But the Bible tells us what? That our eagerness should be to hear the word of the Lord and to operate in obedience to the word of instruction. So our, our response to that should be that of a calculated process rather than hearing for the sole purpose of responding only. Did you know that there are people in your life and my lives that when we speak to them, they're only going to listen to us or hear us to a certain degree just so they can respond? And did you know sometimes that response is as shallow as a thimble because they haven't actually heard or listened to what we're saying? Have you ever been there before? I wonder, and listen, notice the correlation. I'm not talking about just a general conversation necessarily. I'm talking about when we hear the word of the Lord. Some of you in this room this morning are trying to figure out how you're going to get your wife and your mom into the restaurant without having to fight with the Methodist down the street. Now, I'm not, I, I, that's not a negative thing against the Methodist. I love Methodists. I used to be one for a little while. But you're so focused on something else that's going on that you're not actually listening 
You're not actually paying attention. Listen, listen to this. Hearing is a passive intake of a conversation while listening is actually intentionally working through a conversation with the intent to, get this, comprehend. I wonder how many of you come to, came to church this morning, although it's Mother's Day, you came to worship with your mom or your grandmother, praise God, I'm so thankful for that, but you're here this morning, and you're not necessarily listening with the intent to comprehend. You think you've just done a good job to come to church with your mama and papa. And I just want to tell you, just because grandma's going to heaven doesn't mean you are. And so you better listen up. You better pay attention. You better listen with the intent of knowing that you personally have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why? Hey, listen, we have this saying in, in, in ministry. I've, I've said it here before. Some people get upset when I say it, but that's okay. There are no grandchildren in heaven. Only children. Only the child of God gets to go to heaven. Amen? So what are we saying here? So our response should be that of a calculated process rather than hearing solely for the purpose of responding only. And we struggle in our culture today to listen and process what we hear rather than a quick and short-sighted response. So, so James gives us a warning that we need not to do this with the Word of God because the Word of God requires a response, but the better thing to do instead of quickly listening is rather... The, uh, that we listen intently to the spoken or the preached word of God. Now watch, a poor process can lead to a misunderstanding that results in anger. Did you know that? Listen to what it says. My dearly loved brothers, understand this. Everyone must be what? Quick to hear and slow to speak and slow to Anger. So, so in the mode of conversation, in the word that was being distributed, he's saying you need to listen better than you're speaking because if you don't hear it the right way, it will cause an issue of what? Anger to take place. Now, have you ever been in a conversation with someone and misunderstood what was being communicated? Do I have to be the first to raise my hand? I'm going to raise both of mine and a leg just to make sure you understand. That's, that's the reality of it. And, and here's what happens. If we don't listen in order to understand or to comprehend, we'll get, we'll get upset and, and we'll have to back up. And I'll just give you an example of some things that can happen here. Uh, let's say you go home this afternoon and, and despite it being Mother's Day, your wife has cooked you a lunch that she thinks is your favorite lunch. And she worked on it all day yesterday, put it together. So this morning, all she had to do was put it in the crock pot. And when you get home, that lunch is going to be, uh, oh, it's just going to be perfect, immaculate. And you're going to sit down at the table and you're going to say, well, this is not really what I wanted today. Y'all all right? Hey, I'm just going to give you a little word of godly wisdom. Eat it anyway. <laughs> eat it anyway hey listen intently eat it anyway amen amen so so the reality is now now here's what your wife is going to hear you say she, she's not going to hear you say this isn't what i wanted or maybe you'll say well i thought i was going to take you out to lunch today here's what she's going to hear you say i'm not going to eat your cooking and you know what that's going to lead her to later on tonight when you go to sleep she's going to probably hit you with something and then act like she's asleep yeah, it's going to lead to a situation where there was a poor line of communication. Why? Because the poor process can lead to a misunderstanding that eventually will lead to anger. Do you know what anger is, by the way? Anger is when you get mad about something, it's when you have an expectation from someone else that went unmet. That's where anger comes from. Hey, and listen, we all struggle with it. Every single one of us. So, so the reality is that our anger will lead us away from God's desires. The anger prohibited by this passage is not a flashing destructive temper, but it is a, get this, a simmering pot of hostile feelings with mean-spirited feelings. Here's what he's saying. He's not talking about just a situation where somebody cuts you off in the parking lot and you say, well, I hope you have a great day after all. No, he's talking about a situation where you're not willing to forgive and move forward. 
And so you, you stew on it for a little while. And when you stew on it, guess what happens? It festers and it becomes a real issue. So what's, what's the word saying here? He's telling us, be careful. Watch where you're at. He says, verse 24, he says, Therefore rid yourselves of all moral filth and evil excess. Humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save you. Now what's the correlation and what's the tie in this? Watch this. So what can happen sometimes, you can come to worship, and you're not necessarily listening to comprehend. You're just hearing it because it's out there, and you're receiving it through your eardrum, and it's doing its thing. To, but, but you're not really comprehending what's going on. And the preacher will say something, and you'll just get slap dog mad that he said something. And you're not even really sure what he said. But you know what will happen? You'll get so mad. You'll get so upset. You'll go to another church. You know what happens when you get mad and go to another church? You'll just be mad at another church. I, I had a, a, a lady in my life a few years back in Louisiana. She, there was a situation. I, praise God, this was a unique thing. She wasn't mad at the preacher. <laughs> go figure. First time in my career. No, I'm kidding. But she got mad with somebody else in the church. They were not communicating well. And she was going to go to another church, and she lived right there by the church. So I went to visit with her, and I spoke to her. And I just asked her, please, please don't leave. Now, if you, if you think God's calling you to go somewhere else, I get it. I understand. But if God's not calling you away, and you leave, and you're leaving because you're mad, you're going to take your madness and go somewhere else. And when you, what's going to happen is, when you get over there, which you think is a little greener pasture... You're going to get mad over there, and then you're going to go somewhere else, and you're going to get mad there, and you're going to go somewhere else and get mad there. And she said, well, I don't care. I'm leaving. I said, okay, well, I'll see you when you come back. You know what? When she got mad over there, she started coming back. So I finally, I just said, I don't, I don't, come on back. We want you back. We love you. But here's the reality of it. What happened was there was a miscommunication, a poor communication. You got mad and you left. So there's the application in that. Listen, if we'll do this the right way, if we'll just listen, if we'll humbly receive the implanted word, there's a benefit that comes to that. What is the benefit? Which is able to save you. Now that may not necessarily be an eternal salvation, but it might be able to save you from something that's going to cause harm to you or to your family. So we have to listen the right way. So that's the observation. Now watch this. Not only is there an observation, notice the application. And here's the reality. Remember earlier I said every verse or every passage of Scripture has a main idea. And the verse that we're dealing with today, that's the main idea of being a hearer, uh, not just a, only a hearer, but a doer of the Word. Listen to this. Verse 22 and the application. Watch. But be doers of the Word and not only hearers, uh, only deceiving yourselves. Listen to this. Verse 22, rightly, or excuse me, living rightly is directly connected with my obedience to the Word of God. When we only hear the Word without uh, it being coupled together with an action uh, of obedience, we live in deception. Do you see where it says that? Watch. But be doers of the Word and not only hearers, deceiving yourselves. You see, when you say, I am a born-again believer because I've heard of the Word of God, actually you're saying that Christianity is a product of osmosis. So therefore, you could just lay your head on your Bible at night and be a Christian every day. Is that how that works? It doesn't work that way. So rightly living is directly connected with my obedience to the Word of God. And when I don't live in obedience to the Word of God, which is coupled with an action, then I'm living in deception. I'm being deceived or I'm deceiving myself. I'm, I'm operating in a matter of deception. Okay, And listen to this. The command to listen to God's Word describes someone who attends a lecture and the hearer could not agreeably to the message but do nothing as a result. So listen, this, get the correlation to what James is telling us in this. I wonder how many Sunday mornings we come to worship and the preacher, whether it was me or someone in the past who preached a message that was phenomenal to the point where you say, Amen. 
And you agree with that, or, 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 or so it is, or it is well when you say uh, 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 amen to that. So you, you, here's the reality. You can amen yourself all the way to hell if you never act upon the Word of God. So the Word of God requires a response from me. It's just not hearing it. It's me receiving it and then doing something with it. So when we say, amen, preacher, uh, which I love to hear. That's like saying sick em to a pit bull. You know, notice I didn't say bulldog, but I said pit bull. Uh, the reality is, here's, you can amen yourself all the way to hell if you never act upon the Word of God. Do you know the Word of God requires an action for salvation? Get this. The Bible says, be saved from this perverse generation. That means I've got to act upon that. The Bible says, call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. That means I have to actually call on the name of Jesus. The Bible also says that I'm to confess with my mouth and believe in my heart and I will be saved. The Bible says we must act upon the word of God. The Bible says go and make disciples. That's an action word that you and I are actually to get up as we're going along in everyday life and make disciples wherever we go. There's an action that's required in my daily walk. Watch this. The Bible tells us in the book of Luke, take up your cross daily. There's something I must do every day as a born-again believer. I don't just get the privilege of coming to church and sitting and soaking as a sponge and hearing the Word of God and never doing anything with it. Listen to this. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Whew, catch my breath. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we drive out demons in your name? And did we not do many miracles in your name? And then, get this, this is the Lord Jesus saying, then I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. Now listen, church, that's got to either cut you to the core or cause you to celebrate. And if it cuts you to the core, you need to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ died and rose again in order to give you eternal life. And if all you do is know that in your head, but you don't receive that into your heart, guess what? you're going to hear those same words one day. Why? Because the Bible says, I'm not just to be a hearer of the word only, but a doer of the word. And your doing in salvation is simply this. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe what your Bible says. I believe it says that I'm a sinner in need of salvation. And I place my faith and trust in you today. And I repent of my sin and turn away from it. And, and ask you to save me as the ransom for my sin debt. Will you save me, dear Lord Jesus? And if you have said that, guess what the Bible says? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You're saved. But if you're here this morning... And you've never placed your faith into an action of getting up and coming to receive the Lord Jesus Christ? Guess what? You're going to hear for all of eternity, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. I'll tell you what we need to do right now. There's two more points we can go, but I think you understand the biggest point of all. There's a doing you need to do today you're here this morning you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior I'm going to ask brother Travis to come and lead us in a word and I'm going to be right here we've got some godly folks who would love to come and speak with you they're going to be down front right here listen Mother's Day could be the greatest day of your life if right now right here you decide brother Tommy I don't want to just be a, a hearer only anymore I want to be a, a doer of the word of God and I want to trust Jesus today as my Lord and Savior would you stand with me, please? Father, I'm going to ask you, Lord Jesus, 
Lord, as I, as I reread over this scripture this morning and prayed over this sermon, Lord, tears came from my eyes over the many folks who will sit under the word all their life and never get up and do anything with it. God, I believe that you want to do a work here today. I believe there's one here this morning that needs to come and place their faith in you, Father. Maybe there's one this morning who would come and say, Brother Tommy, I've been struggling with a, with a surrender to a call of ministry, and I believe God, I've got to go do something with this call. Maybe you're here this morning and you would say, Brother Tommy, I, I know I believe, but I also know my baptism's not in the right place. Father, have your way that we might get it right with you and walk in obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. Just trying to get all my announcements in the right order here. Sorry about that delay. On, on the inside of your bulletin, don't forget uh, uh, First Baptist Church Graduate Recognition Service, Sunday, May the 22nd, 10.30 a.m. If you have a graduate, uh, whether uh, that's a high school or a college, we need a couple of the pictures. We need the information. Uh, we're going to have a celebration that day. It's going to be a wonderful time. After the service, there'll be a reception. Uh, for the family of the graduate as well. So it's going to be a wonderful day. Hey, don't forget, there's no evening services or activities here tonight. So spend the afternoon with mom. Do what mom wants to do today. And I talked to Cheryl. She wants to go fishing this evening. Uh, <laughs> Y'all pray for Cheryl. Tomorrow night, amen. Pray more than you're already doing, right? May the 9th, tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock, nominating committee meeting. We're kicking off uh, our nominating uh, committee season, so we're going to be calling upon you. We need Sunday school teachers. We need other op opportunities to serve. Tuesday, season saints, we're going to be leaving here at what time, Brother Tom? 10.30. We need to meet here at 10. Meet here at 10. We're leaving at 10.30. We're going up to Sylvania 
to the farm to catch fish. Is that right? Hey, man, he went and bought, he went and bought $10,000 worth of catfish to put in that pond the other day. Oh, wait, I wasn't supposed to say that, was I? That's right. Uh, that's right. Plenty of grass carp out there for you if you want them. So they're good if you grill them, right? Hmm. Uh, and then next Sunday morning, church conference and then church council. A lot of things going on. So are you happy and you know it? Say amen. amen. If you're hungry and ready to go have lunch, say a- amen. Amen. Hey, listen, we love you, church. We love the fact that we get to serve here with you. And uh, what a blessing. Praise God for our moms. Amen. Brother Travis. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. How great. 